Hello, Good Life Travelers. Welcome to another episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. It's good to see everyone. We've got the full crew today, our all-inclusive specialist, Chrissy. We've got our uh, world traveler, world everything uh, travel specialist, Tamara. And then you're stuck with a cruise travel specialist, Michael. It's good to be with everyone, ladies. Doing good? good? You yes. Too. Yeah, you're a little bit of a world traveler right now, too. Not quite. Not quite the same, Tamara. No. You know, I go to the simple little Norwegian fjords. Norway. With <laughs> nature, you know. To Alaska soon. Yes, Alaska. That's beautiful. exciting. Yeah, follow the uh, Cruising with Michael page, and you can see lots of pictures and information. Just like the Traveling with Tamara and the Paradise Found with Chrissy. Yes. So you can follow all of our adventures on those groups and pictures and all that interaction, all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Everyone's, <laughs> we're sleepy. <laughs> well, I will. I'll be, in, and on our full disclosure, this is a pre-recorded episode. Um, because of all of our upcoming travels, we thought we'd record some ahead of time, so we're prepared. And today's actually a part two of an episode we had a few, not too long ago about travels, uh, Tamara's travels to... Uh, you went to London, mm -hmm. and then you went to Paris. So mm -hmm. the previous episode, if you haven't seen it, watch it on our YouTube channel. It's uh, episode 52, I believe, of Travel Talk Tuesday. And it's all about London and your adventures there. Yep. And then you kind of teased us a little bit on the whole Paris thing, because you took a little train ride on yeah. over. So maybe that's where we should probably start about your talks about Paris and France and all that good stuff, by how you got, how easy it was to get there from now. Certainly people can fly from the U.S., over to Paris, but right. if you're going to hop around and use a different kind of method, it's not a bad place to start in London, is what you do. Lo yeah, London was, it was easy to get to Paris. It's just over a two-hour Eurostar uh, train ride, which is the tunnel. If you remember when they were building the tunnel underneath the English Channel called the Tunnel, it's now Eurostar. You go underwater? You go in a you tunnel did, under the never channel. Heard of this? <laughs> no. You've never heard of that? No. So yeah. the tunnel goes underwater? It goes underneath the channel the the channel the english channel but so you're you have water above you you have it's a tunnel i know that but above the tunnel there's yeah, water. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why chrissy sticks to bars and beaches and all inclusive <laughs> i don't think your anxiety will let you go on it oh it's very easy oh, i don't think so either really at that whole yeah i don't think with her anxiety she could it's like 20 minutes so anyways in the uh, so the euros eurostar is the, the company that runs that uh, train line and it goes you can go to Paris from London or you can go to Amsterdam Brussels I think that area too and from London it leaves from St. Pancras station which is kind of in the center of London and it's about a two and a half hour trip so you actually go through customs uh, when you leave uh, London you go through French customs to get into Paris it's it, it's very very easy how um, much is that the tickets can be the it's dynamic pricing. Um, it can be a little pricey. Ours actually were more expensive to it was more expensive to take the Eurostar than to fly, but it was wow. less time and less effort to take the Eurostar than to fly. So we took the Eurostar there and we we flew back just so I could do both ways and, ch and check out the different airports. Um, but there are times of the year where it is very it's it's very inexpensive to use the Eurostar. And at certain times of the year, the Eurostar will go uh, directly from London to Paris and then from Paris to Disneyland Paris. You can actually buy a ticket that takes you completely on that journey without having to get off. I bet that's popular. Yeah, wow. I had, we actually did go to, to Disneyland Paris, but we stopped at um, Gare du Nord in Paris for the evening before traveling on to Disneyland Paris. But it was very easy to get from that station to Disneyland Paris. But but first, once we landed or once we got to... Um, well, let me talk about Eurostar first. <laughs> the The trains are very, very nice. Uh, I think we had a premium class seat. Even though I bought like just a regular seat, we got upgraded. And uh, so it was one seat on one side and two seats on the other side. So three seats in a row. And uh, well, that's a little spacious. It was spacious. We had Wi-Fi. We had places to plug in our uh, um, our phones and iPads. Uh, I, there was even like a little uh, flip down mirror that was in front of me on the back seat. They came through with uh, wine and beer and food for us, which I didn't expect at all. But it was a lovely touch. And that is included in your um, your fare. How was the food? <laughs> So and it was no five guys, you know. <laughs> it was just okay. It was just okay. Uh, we actually didn't. We we 
declined the lunch because we had just eaten lunch before, not realizing we were going to get a meal, an upgraded seat with a meal on the uh. train. But they uh, insisted we take we would take the dessert mm. and some wine, which we did. The dessert was just okay. I would not ride the train for the, <laughs> uh, for the food at all. But it was very it was very nice, lovely touch. So we got to the um, the train station, and I had booked a hotel close to the train station because I knew we were going to need to be at that train station in the morning the next day. So I got there and I was not impressed with Paris at all. I think I texted you, did you guys. Text us. That's, yeah. Paris is dirty. I don't like it. Which I had actually heard that from a lot of people before I, I went. Mm-hmm. And I went with that preconceived notion and then it came true. And I thought, oh, you know, this is going to be, I'm going to have a tough time getting through Paris because London was lovely. So one night in that area... We went to see a cabaret show, which like Moulin Rouge. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold up. Ooh la la. Yeah, I didn't la know la. this. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, Moulin Rouge was right. You could see Moulin Rouge from where we went. We went to La Nouvelle Eve, which was like a sister property to Moulin Rouge. Uh, it was very nice. Very nice. A little touristy. You, there were like lots of bus groups that were uh, there to see it. But the show itself was really good. It was in, Tasteful or was it a little bit uh, smutty? It's French. So, <laughs> yeah, there was there were some topless moments. Oh, my goodness. But, I need a piece of chocolate as we talk French. about this. That's French. That's French. Just uh, like this candy bar. Here and they we go. speak and they did the show in both uh, French and English. So they would oh. say something in English and then they would say something in French. Or one I thought person... there was words. I thought they just danced around. Well, they would sing. Oh. Like I don't know was... in French I just... or in English. <laughs> They Dance did that, the you know, the Can Can Girl. Yeah. Da, 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 da. They, there was they just a, had those little fluffy skirts. Yeah, they did a whole bunch of that stuff. Uh, you know, just a cabaret show, different acts. I don't know if I've ever been to a cabaret show. It's like a variety show. There was, you know, a shirtless guy swinging on a rope from the ceiling that was in a bathtub. It was interesting. Yeah. Chrissy liked it? Yeah. So this is a... You would have liked that. So this is a, ch- I just brought this back because it's a ch- it was a chocolate bar that was in, we went, mm. we went to Disneyland, Paris, and we went to a new hotel in Paris, which was wonderful. And this was left in our room yeah. every night we came back and had a different treat. So this is like a, that's legit. Yeah. And you know what I like about this bar is that you can, you can break off little tiny pieces. It's like scored. That's her so. size. I like this size. <laughs> little small pieces. You can break them into tiny pieces. Oh yeah. All kinds I of that different. Kind of yeah. Well, I like this. So. So saw the cabaret show. <clears throat> Next morning, got up, took the train to um, to Disney World, uh, Disneyland, Paris. Which we, my family's kind of Disney. We're Disney people, so we were very excited to do that. We'd never been there before. Easy train ride. <clears throat> we decided to stay in uh, one of the Disney properties. We stayed at Newport, Newport Bay, I think it's called. So the train station is right in front of Disney. Like, the entrance to Disneyland Paris is 200 feet away from the train station. Which That's convenient. Which is very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. And they have a little... It's called Disney Village, but it's like downtown Disney. Mm-hmm. And then there's uh, Disney Studios, which is a different park. So there's two parks. Uh, Disney um, Village is kind of in the middle, and they're doing a bunch of remodeling in that area, which I think is going to make Disney Village much more nice than it, nicer than it is. So we um, found the Disney bus to, to go to our hotel because it, you could walk it, but it was like a 15, 20 minute walk and we had luggage and we did not want to do that through cobblestone areas. And so we, we hopped on the bus, went to our hotel <clears throat> and then went into the parks. Uh, we had a two day, two park. We could park, hop between the parks, pass. I want to say it was about $100 a day per person, which is less than. I was yeah, going to say, that's not as bad. Yeah. You really don't need more than two days to do those parks. They're not as big as the ones here. Some similar rides, but a lot of different rides as well. And some of them are a little odd to us culturally. <laughs> um, but but it's definitely worth going. Uh, uh, they have things like Small World where uh, the dolls are singing in French too, which was interesting. How does that go, Tam? I, I don't Can know you how just to say sing it. it? No. <laughs> no. They yeah. sing in French at ours too, don't they? Sing, don't the little ones sing in? They all? say like "Ooh la la." <laughs> <laughs> We're the little can girls. girls. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was a really great ride. Um, 
Uh, they had like uh, Big Thunder Mountain, which was really is different. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which I th actually thought was better than the one we yeah. have here. Uh, the one I really wanted to see was called Phantom Manor, which is like Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. And it was closed for the whole week that we were. Oh, gee. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> which kind of stunk. But um, uh, what else can I tell you about Disneyland Paris? Uh, How was the food? Food, not great. Oh. No, not great. Oh. Yeah, I was very disappointed in that. <clears throat> no Mickey Waffles? No, 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 no. We, I have to hate to say it. We wow. ate at McDonald's as we walked oh into the village for, for breakfast. Yeah, I know. Have you told Tyler your son <laughs> about these, these I experiences? I can't believe she's got this film that she's saying. I know, I know, I know. But First it was on, five guys now. It was on our guys. path, and I knew they had breakfast, and I really just wanted a cup of American coffee. <laughs> when you go to Europe, co the coffee thing is a whole, yeah. a whole issue because you can't just order a cup of coffee. They don't really have our type of filtered coffee. It's like an espresso or a cappuccino. You can Water down. You can order a cafe americano, which yeah. is espresso that's got hot water added to it. It's just not the same, but I knew McDonald's would have <laughs> coffee. So I got a cup of coffee there. And I like it. Do they call it americano there? Or do they just say... I have to, I, I say like um, American way. Like, do you have like filtered coffee, like American style coffee that's like yeah. brewed and they sure. say yes or no? Okay. Starbucks did not have it. Yeah, the really? Star because we stopped at the Starbucks once too at Disney Village. <laughs> well, so. you were with Will, so yeah. of course you did. Yeah, <laughs> he always has to look for the cups. Right. But um, <laughs> yeah, they did not have just American style wow. coffee, which really surprised me. I had to get like a cappuccino, but. Um, uh, the food, not great at all. I, that was a disappointment. The entertainment was really good. They had a, um, a drone show at night. Oh, I think we have I think a video. We need to yeah, post that. Which mm -hmm. was good. And then uh, their, uh, like, wishes or whatever, whatever the fireworks show is, they had one of those, which was really good. Uh, let's see. Were How, the prices comparable? Like uh, food and souvenirs and all that stuff inside Disney? Mm, as the U.S.? Mm, we didn't really shop much for souvenirs. Uh, they were just different. I didn't see anything that really jumped out at me. Food, oh, we did have, I do have to say, we, there was a little restaurant that had like, d like tea, afternoon tea, which we stopped and had, uh, tea. we had, uh, I think there were like five desserts and he, we got, I got Vienna coffee. I think William got uh, hot chocolate, but, uh, the line for it when we left was huge. So that was a really, that was really nice. I like stopping there. Last well, what I was going to ask, how were the crowds compared to our Disney? N not... It wasn't bad. No. You could buy like a fast pass. I think that was like an extra $100 per person per day. And we, I thought about it because I thought, you know, that might be an efficient way to just zip through everything and then I can go do something else. But really, I didn't need it. Okay. It wasn't bad. Is this like their down season, you think? or? No, there were lots of, um, there were, there were lots of people there still. And I, I think I told you yesterday, I noticed a lot of European mom and dad who are older, like in their 30s, maybe even late 30s with one child. That really? was like a big thing. Oh. Sometimes grandma and grandpa were with them, but it was a lot of just two parents. They wait to get married and have kids Yeah, now. one child. Wow. It's a whole different thing. So a lot of Italian uh, language being spoken, German, French, of course. It's really not catered to Americans at all. It is definitely for They're probably like, you Europeans. have your own. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, like the buses that take you back and forth between the park and the hotel, they're not branded. You know, like they have yeah. the big Mickey Mouse. They're just white buses. Hmm. Yeah, and you can walk. Wait, you can walk, but it's it's quite a bit of a walk. Hmm. They have um, six or seven hotels. A lot of them have American themes. Some are like southwestern themes. There's a New York one, but it's they're kind of cheesy compared to yeah. what we're what we're used to here. But if you're gonna if you're gonna be in Paris and you have an extra couple of days, definitely go because they're, they're and you're a Disney fan. Go. There's there really are good rides. It's worth a day and a half. Hmm. Two days if you want to relax a little bit. Two nights, you know, two nights is good. A the unique hotels, experience then. Yeah, a very unique experience. So once we were done with that, we uh, went back to the city of Paris to uh, a different neighborhood. I think we were in the fifth or sixth arrondissement. And I then fell in love with Paris. <laughs> then I was like, oh my gosh, the people who complain about Paris being dirty or, you know, not worth a visit probably have never been to the right parts of Paris. So because, were they too far out? Is it the closer you're in? Maybe. Those Ronda it, yeah, Ronda Yeah. How, Chrissy, how's that? Ronda Smots. Yeah. <laughs> I took French in high school. Oh, so you should, what does that mean then, Chrissy? Probably roundabout or something. No. No. There's. <laughs> <laughs> Ronda I don't know. It's not like I do. So if you 
start in the center of Paris and start working your way around like right. a snail. There's different neighborhoods called I arrondissements. Knew that. I knew that. There's 20 of them. And the closer you are to the center, the lower the number. So we were in the fifth or sixth. So we were kind of close to the center. We were in a really good neighborhood. I think we were in like the St. Michael or St. Germain uh, neighborhood, which was kind of close to the Ile de la Cité, which is where Notre Dame is. But it was local, which I love. Like across the street from our hotel was a school. And there was a restaurant next door to the school where local people ate. Local stores. You know, you see things like boulangeries, fromageries. A boulangerie. This is a, a child-friendly show. A bakery and a cheese shop. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Of course you remember the food stuff. Right? <laughs> we stopped one place and there was a, a patisserie, which is pastries. I a, knew that. A boulangerie, which is bread. A fromagerie, which is cheese. There was a wine shop. There was a fish shop. There was a... I bet like, you love that fish shop. A char- char- Poisson. Yeah. Poisson, yes. Uh... Just a saying. charcuterie place where you oh, get, that's like, the board that so you put the meat and cheese <laughs> on. Yeah, it was like it was like those meats that you. So, anyways, oh, like right that. in a row were all the shops that you needed to get stuff for like yeah. a picnic. So we went and to got a uh, baguette Aww. first because when you're in France, you have to have a baguette. There's it tastes so good. There's <laughs> nothing like it. You have to have it fresh. And I'm, this is like four o'clock in the afternoon one day, and uh, it was it was hot when we got it. And the government actually legislates how much a baguette costs. I don't think it can cost more than like a one right. euro fifty. Mine was, it was a euro twenty, which is like a dollar thirty, maybe dollar thirty five. And uh, then next door was the fromagerie. So you know, I walked in and I said, "Help me." You know, I don't know what kind of cheese to get. I want something kind of. Uh, I don't want something soft. I don't want something hard in the middle. And they picked out something local and lovely. Whacked off a little piece, and we had <laughs> cheese and. Uh, <laughs> And bread is a little afternoon oh, snack. Funny. So, no wine. No, I didn't buy wine. I had I had wine while we were there, but I didn't buy a bottle of wine then. Mm. So, um, so anyways, when we got back into Paris from Disneyland, we took a. Ugh, That's when we had the bread and cheese, though, right? We had it later on, but oh, okay. uh, that day. But when we got there, we got there mid, mid afternoon. The uh, I had booked a bike ride through Paris. Oh. Which oh, I thought horrible. Well, it was it was my <laughs> my butt really hurt after. Yeah, I bet those yeah. seats aren't meant but, for. So it was like uh, you could take an Uber. It was like maybe twenty five dollars, or you could uh, walk. It was like maybe fifty minutes. I'm like, let's walk. So we walked to it, and it, it took a long time. Oh. And, but we got to steal up. <laughs> then you get on a bike and you bike all through Paris. My legs were like rubber when I Is was. Is it just done. the two of you, or are you with a group? We, it was a private. It was private. We had um, a guide. Okay. But it was those the electric help? Oh, bikes, yeah. Good. Which was nice. But really, that was a really efficient way to see Paris. They take you through all the little back ways, and you see everything. Do you have like a little bell? You bring, bring. Like people no, are in front of you. I wish. <laughs> no. How, about, how do they do about traffic? So in Europe, there's a there's they're very conscious about walkers and bikers. Mm-hmm. So there's bike lanes and roads that are just for pedestrians or bikers. But then there are places where they don't have that. And my guide is a Parisian, so he's just going in and out, in and out. And I'm like, what? You know, it was it was a little scary in in spots, but it really was sounds a good fun. It was fun. fun. We really because it was the best way to see it. We really yeah. I didn't want to go underground because if you're in the subway, you're not going to see stuff. And I don't want to walk because Paris is big, so you really need to, you really need to be out. And I want to be able to get into the little spots. So he like took us to, um, you know, a great little place, a little bakery, a popular place for Americans called Angelina's. So we st- we just stopped by, by there quick. I took pictures. We I grabbed three macarons so we could each have one, which they were delicious. And then we moved on. But like now I know that place. Three. Who was the third person? The, the guy. guide. Oh, oh, it was just the three of you. I thought there was yeah. a small no, no, group. No, it was no, a couple no. more. Oh, okay. All right. No. So, uh, yeah, so that was great. And then, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what we did that night. Oh. We did the bread and cheese thing. Yeah, but we did something in the evening, but I, I can't remember. It's it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Not Versailles. It's gone. You need to go to Versailles. Though. The next day, we got up to go to Versailles. Oh, just in time to discuss Versailles a little sweet here. <laughs> oh, we yeah, we got it. We, first, we went to Monet's Garden. Oh, from oh, the artist yeah. and Giverny. So I had purchased train tickets, took an Uber to the train station. And the train was working? Did 
uh, I did not, I had not purchased train tickets, that's right. I knew how to get there, but um, I still had to purchase our tickets. So get to the train station. This is a different country and they're not on strike yet. <laughs> get to the train station. I've got like 20 minutes before my train. I go to buy tickets at a machine. There's a person in front of me at the machine who's taking forever and ever and ever. And I'm looking at it thinking, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to miss this train. So finally she leaves. I go to buy tickets. It won't give me that option. I'm at the wrong oh, train no. line. Oh no, after all yeah. that time. I'm at the right station, but I'm at the wrong ticket booth. I <laughs> thought it was the SCNF, it was the TGV. So went to get tickets at TGV, we missed the train. I'm like, oh! oh. <laughs> and you were there. tickets, and oh. I need to get about an hour and 15 minutes away. What do I do? I call Uber. It was, ex it was expensive. Oops. But... Again, in, in retrospect, I'm very glad that I had Uber because we went from door to door. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if I took the train, I'd still have to get an Uber or a bus from Giverny to Monet's Garden. I got to really see a lot from the car versus zipping through tunnels on a train. It was okay. Monet's Garden was gorgeous. I really, really oh, I loved bet. it. Yeah. I mean, you're a garden queen, so I would think yeah, you... Yeah, I really loved it. The home was lovely. I didn't realize that... Monet was still living like the turn of the 20th century. It's not really that old. It's an old farmhouse, but he was there painting, you know, <clears throat> not that long ago, you know, over a hundred years ago, but his home was, it's really nice. Um, the gardens are amazing. Uh, like big area. Is there a lot? Big area of garden. Mm -hmm. And then if across the street, um, there is like a pond where he did like his water lily paintings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you see his pond, you realize, you know, oh my gosh, I recognize oh, that from the painting. Cool. Just gorgeous. Uh, highly recommend going there. Is it touristy? Because I don't think a lot of people would that'd be like a big tourist I don't think spot. It would be. Huge tourist spot. We got there early. Usually you don't like that stuff. No, I don't. But I really <laughs> wanted to see that. Like that was like there's it's Monet's house. You have to go see it. But my, my tip for that would be get tickets early. Go there first thing because we were there early as the day, as the hour went on, it got busier and busier. And you, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not fun at that point because they're narrow garden paths and you mm -hmm. are really just in a herd of people. You can't even really take a picture because mm, there's, so many, <laughs> yeah, there's so many people there. So go early, go get the first ticket of the day and get, get up and get, get there early. Mm. So when we were done with that, then we were heading to Versailles, so we took a, a Uber to the a train station and then took a train to Versailles. And Versailles is maybe about 25 minutes outside of Paris. Uh, so I was most excited for Versailles. It's a it's an enormous palace. We've all seen movies and know about Marie Antoinette, and mm -hmm. yeah, it just that was top on my bucket list. And I have to say, unfortunately, it was a really big disappointment. I still think people should go see it. But it was not Lower what I expected it to be. No, they, it's not. First of all, too many people. There's too many people they allow in Versailles. You're herded through. Again, you really can't see anything. Second, uh, it's not really well interpreted. It's um, if you if I didn't already know about Versailles, like for example, if I didn't know that Marie Antoinette had the Petit Trianon. I wouldn't even know to go there oh, and see it. Yeah. yeah, that was her best <laughs> what recipe. Does that mean? And then that the, was her best recipe. Her Hamlet, like uh, those things, you wouldn't even know you need to go see. A book? No, <laughs> I'll explain that. A then. play. Isn't that Shakespeare? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and third, I don't think it's really well taken care of. It's very oh, no. dusty and dirty, and oh, a lot yeah. of the things are just uh, they made adjustments. It's not historically. Mm. What are they doing with all that money then? Because I'm sure they're charging know, for it. I know. I question that too because it is, I think it was 35 euro per person to get in. That mm. And then another 5 euro for the audio guides, which the audio guides really, I did not enjoy at all. I didn't learn anything. I didn't learn about the people that live there. And you walk in each room and there would be a small sign in French and English of what it was, you know, three or four sentences. And then there'd be a number on the sign, that's what you're supposed to listen to. Some of the signs just had a handwritten number that was they just <laughs> wrote out with a magic marker. It totally, wow. I was totally disappointed. Oh. The gardens of Versailles are enormous, and uh, look, and I'm a gardener. I love those things. So uh, you you wouldn't know that you probably should rent a golf cart to visit the gardens because if you don't, you are gonna walk four miles to go see anything oh other than gosh. But did you rent golf carts? 
carts. They rent golf carts. It's like, it's like uh, putting bait. Chris. Yeah. There's no signs to tell you where to go to get a golf cart. I had done research in advance, so I knew there was right. a tent like out in the distance. Did you that, get one? Yeah, so we, we, I knew that I had to go find that tent. And <laughs> there was a line there. You had to wait for a golf cart to come back before you actually oh. got a golf cart. So once we got it, I think it was about 35 euro an hour to rent it. Totally worth it. You set off to see the other parts of the gardens and the buildings, like the Petit Trianon, the um, Grand Trianon. So the Petit Trianon was Marie Antoinette's kind of personal home that uh, Louis the Sixteenth gave to her as like a place where she could escape. And uh, a, a, about a, I knew that. Okay, about a mile <laughs> from the Petit Trianon is the hamlet where she. It was like a farm that she created to kind of play farm but again you wouldn't even know that the hamlet was there unless you knew in advance you need to go find the hamlet so it was interesting but not again not interpreted it's just buildings that you look at they were pretty to look at but you know it is what it is is it a hog farm the hamlet no ham no that's <laughs> hilarious no it's where she would uh we're getting slap happy yeah she it's would the chocolate she would go and entertain her friends at the hamlet and pretend like she was a you know just a poor little farm girl mm -hmm. i know people who do that yeah and then kind of by that is the grand trianon which is where the king had his escape or his mistress why lived. does everybody have to escape from everybody i know well court life i mean <laughs> I, what's your guys's escape the court like the french court was very demanding um we saw their official bedrooms where every morning there'd be an audience that would come in and watch them get up and get dressed. Really? Yeah. Oh. The okay, so I get the, the escape now. Yeah. Well, what a show. So the, like, the reason Versailles is so big is because the court needed a place to stay. It's like a hotel. Mm. So you've got you know the official royal places, but then you need apartments for all the courtiers that The people are... you pay to be your friends. Exactly. <laughs> it's like so, those shows. Yeah. Do they brush their teeth in the morning? Before they see the court. Oh my god! I don't know. Probably I wouldn't know. They didn't the interpret deep it. questions that we ask on Travel Talk Tuesday. Yeah. I'm trying to so, think about life back then. Was there a little cup with a toothbrush on the sink? No. 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 I don't even think we saw a bathroom. There may have been a dressing room. Well, they just had those bowls in the water. Wait, I did see a toilet somewhere. Like there was like a indoor wooden seat with a bowl underneath. Maybe that was the petit trina. Anyways, I probably could take a picture of it. Uh, yeah, Versailles, not a big, uh, not, I wasn't a fan. So as we're driving around in our golf cart, uh, you could just see the look on people's faces. Like, they didn't what did I know. do? Yeah. <laughs> like, where did, like, we got flagged a number of times. Where did you get that golf cart? I felt bad not, like, offering. No. She gave rides. Right. So she should have. <laughs> but uh, on the, as we were driving back at the end, we spent maybe two or three hours driving around. Driving back, you see all these dead golf carts that <laughs> ran out of energy. <laughs> and then nice. you see, like, a, the golf cart guy coming with, like, three hitch behind him oh. to bring fresh golf carts on. And our, I thought ours was going to die, too. It was oh, very, gosh. very, like, slow. slow. Yeah. yeah. That sounds horrible. I would, like, pr I press it all the way down. <laughs> sounds horrible. Uh, one of the coolest <laughs> things we saw there in the gardens were they had a musical fountain show. So there were these big fountains that did, like, Bellagio stuff. But they were oh. doing that. They were doing that in the 18th century. Wow. So it's all like pressure, like water pressure. Well, someone had to do then. it then. I don't know how, I don't know how they rigged it up, but they were doing it then. Mm. And um, I thought that was kind of cool. So you hear like you're driving around, you hear music playing, which would have been an orchestra, but it was speakers this time. And then you know, you pull over and you watch the water show. Any animals frolicking around? No. No. Huh. Even they, they didn't run the golf cart, so they couldn't make it. No. <laughs> Thank God I would think there would be little carts. things living around. Literally, if you saw a map, it was horrible, <laughs> the walk, horrible. And there, if, like, if you walk to the very end, there's a big pond that you can use to, um, you can row, uh, run rowboats and row on the pond, which is nice. You can rent bikes, but even biking there would be... <laughs> Get the golf cart. Well, you're behind, but hurt get after that. Yeah, get the ah. golf cart. Uh, and then later that evening, my friend Chrissy kind of bailed us out because the night before, the night before we had walked around in the dark or in you know the dusk to see the lights of Paris, which were gorgeous. So I was like, you know, we really need to rent. We need to really go on a boat of the Seine River because that's how you see Paris the best way. So Chrissy found us a great tour. Uh, we jumped on a boat, I think, I think 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock yeah, was our time. Yeah. 
The boat was docked right underneath the Eiffel Tower, so we watched the lights of the Eiffel Tower come on, mm. and it really was magical. It um, at night the Parisians go to their patisseries and boulangeries and fromageries, and they get food, and then they go sit along the side of the river. Mm. So as your boat goes by, you can see these little tiny parties. People out just having fun, enjoying the evening, being together. They wave as you go by, drinking wine, and uh, I loved that moment. It uh, it was That's it neat. was really cool to see. Um, I read an article before I left, and it stuck in my head. And it said, "You you really when you go somewhere, you should really feel it, not just see it." So you can go to Paris, and you can see it. You can drive through on a tour bus and you can check it off the list, but to actually get in there and and experience and walk the, walk the streets and go in the store and hear stores and hear the mm -hmm. people talking and watching them, that's feeling a city. And you, I, my best places have been the places that I have felt it in. I really felt Paris. If you go to Paris and you think it's dirty and you don't like it, you're probably not in the right yeah, neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, mine was so long ago, I don't remember. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what neighborhoods we were in. Yeah. But I remember thinking... But see, dirty. that's where you come in to help. Because you right. know where. Right. You know. Yeah. You're not going to be in the dirty area. What no. you know, cycle thing you're supposed to be in? Around this month? Whatever. Around this month. <laughs> so across the street from our hotel, I mentioned there was a, like an elementary school. But next door to the elementary school was a restaurant. And uh, we, were, we were in our hotel room one afternoon just kind of refreshing. And I heard just people outside talking. And I looked out my window. There was a giant line of people waiting to get into this restaurant. <laughs> And all night long, that line never really went away. So I was like, we got to go try this restaurant. So we did. And the restaurant only serves a walnut salad. You sit down, they bring you a walnut salad. You don't even, you don't even get a menu. You don't What's order in the anything. walnut salad? What else? It's, it like um, a, it's lettuce. Like a candied walnut? A, I don't think it was candied. A walnut and some sort of dressing. Vinaigrette. Like a light, like, yeah. a light vinaigrette. It was delicious. Then they bring you a, um, it's a steak. They used to ask you, how do you want it cooked? Like a piece of steak or like a steak sandwich? Like a flank steak oh. that is mm. sliced. And then it's got this green, delicious sauce on it. I'm not sure what the sauce it's is. It's not your um, chimichurri? chimichurri? No. In fact, I looked up a recipe and it, I think they even put goose liver in it to make it kind of creamier. It was, it was delicious. And french fries or frites. That's really? it. You get the meat and you get fries. And... Uh, they probably said that's the American it place. It was really you know? it, no, they were not, it was and a not line out the door for it. Line out the door, not expensive or no? I think I think for both of us, we got wine. Uh, maybe it was maybe sixty euros, so that's like sixty eight dollars. But um, it really it was really good. And then uh, is when you're done eating, if you they, they'll bring you more. Like you don't even ask for it. They write what you how you want your steak done on your table. Like on the paper tablecloth, and then they—if you say medium—they just keep bring you more meat that's medium. It's so it's like a, a local tourist thing. All it the was, French they all go to see. It, it was definitely it. local. Yeah, it was kind of fun to do that. It was definitely local. Um, that's neat. The dessert menu looked amazing, but we we couldn't do any more desserts. So we, <laughs> but we wanted to. It looked really good. But yeah, that's feeling Paris. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. The next morning. Um, then we headed back to uh, London on a flight, which we already talked about London. So, so okay, we'll do a little rapid fire. Chris, do you have any rapid fire questions before we dig deep? Not really. Okay the <laughs> the most weird thing at the Disney park you saw? Hmm. You thought this is Disney? Like you know something weird? It's <sighs> a good question, but I can't think. I'm sure I should probably flip my pictures. It was just, it was just all a little, it was familiar, but weird. Okay. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like you should know what's going to be, <laughs> but it's not. Okay. And well, I can tell you oh, what it was. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So we watched The Lion King live, which I love The Lion mm -hmm. King. So the hyenas come out and it looks like they're ready for Mardi Gras. <laughs> they, they've got like, <laughs> like beads in their head and I'm like this is not they don't look no. like scary hyenas they look like they're ready for Mardi Gras Party but that hyenas. was like the French way like um Timon the meerkat looked like Louis the 16th like yeah. he had like a oh, pompadour cute. and like tights and an ass a oh, really ass hat. that you know just yeah. a different cultural interpretation um okay 
uh, did you speak French yes. or English? Because sometimes I hear they don't like English. They, they really want you to try French. Everywhere I'm saying. Yeah, they really do. If you, It's very impolite if you don't say bonjour when you walk in uh, to a store or a restaurant. Uh, you really need to try to speak a few phrases in French. Merci, which is thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, bonsoir, which means good evening. Right? Is that good evening? Yeah. So you just have to know... <laughs> Um, you can say parlez-vous anglais. Do you speak English? And like, Comment allez-vous? Yeah. Uh, how do you say my name is? Uh, je, je suis. Je suis? I think it's... Je me say Paul? Je suis Tamara. Okay. I think. Je suis. Everybody corrects how I say my name. I'm uh, Tamara. Or, Tamara. Yeah. <laughs> I can never have my name the way I want it in Europe. But you really have to try. Uh, any sites you absolutely want to go back to and see again? I just, Paris in general, gosh, it's really, there's so many museums that you really need to take the time and go see. Like the Louvre is, was a former palace. It's not just like that little area you see with the triangle out mm -hmm, front, mm -hmm. the whatever it's called, the pyramid. It's a giant former palace in the center of Paris that would probably take you days to go through. And some people just run in and see the, the Mona Lisa and run out. No, there's so much more to see. There was a Dior exhibit, Christian Dior exhibit. I would have loved to have seen the Musée d'Orsay. I'd love to see. There's so much in Paris I want to go back and do. And I really just want to go back and shop. So many unique stores with beautiful things that, you know, I just didn't have the time to do. But I would How love to. long does someone need? Now, not to see everything. You never yeah. going to see everything in one Again, stint. I think if you're going to go to a city and focus on that city, like seven to ten days is good. And it depends on your pace, but I would not spend all that time just in the city. I would go out and see Monet's garden. I would go out and see probably Versailles. I really probably would keep that on your list, but I would put your expectations at what they should be. The Hall of Mirrors is really something everybody should see. Um, but there are other there are other great castles around, you know, day trip around that area. So I would say seven to ten days is, would be good. Uh, best thing you ate there? That steak was really good, but I love a good quiche Lorraine, too. <laughs> I really do. That's your answer to every favorite food. I love quiche Lorraine. We went to, we had lunch at Versailles. They had a little, uh, that Angelina place that I talked about. They had a cafe at Versailles, and uh, it just had quiche on the menu, and I was like, oh, please let it be quiche Lorraine, and it was. It made me happy. So, I what's that, that, ham and cheese? Yeah, gr 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 gruyere. Gruyere. Yeah, cheese and ham. There's nothing like it in France. Like, it tastes different. And in France, the butter is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I know she didn't bring that back for us. I, you know, I thought about it because I see a lot of people put, like, what's the best souvenir to bring back from France? And they'll say butter. Really? And they'll ask their hotel to freeze it. And then, you know, you get on your flight and you come back and it's fine. But I was going to uh, back to London for, you know, a day and a half. So, no longer than that. Anyways, it, uh, yeah, I couldn't do it, but I re I went to Meyer to try to buy French butter when I got back, but it's just <laughs> that, yeah, it's so good. We ordered room service one night, and they brought us butter and baguettes, and I was like, oh, so good, so. Yum. Uh, I think that's all I've got. Do you have any other rapid fire, Christy? You know, you no, je suis très fatiguée. Did you just call me a fatty? <laughs> <laughs> no, that means I'm very tired. Oh, oh. oh. Tamara, what else are we missing that you wanted to share? Anything else? Uh, I just want to mention, uh, if you do the London-Paris combo, you're going to need currency in two different denominations because, uh, as you probably know, Europe, uh, England is no, the United Kingdom is no longer part of the uh, uh -huh. European Union. So you're going to need your, uh, your pounds in the United Kingdom and you're going to need euros in... Uh, France but it's so easy to do both they're both great places to go worthy of a visit on by themselves but you can put it in a combo I really hope both I, you, you've been to Paris but I hope I know I, I know need you to need go. to go I do I know. well it's a good port for um, river cruises too sign yeah yeah and we have a couple Christmas ones we talked about yeah. Christmas markets the French Christmas markets we have some for this year in December and one next year in December so yeah if that interests you you know what's really popular in Paris right now for Americans? Emily in Paris sites. Oh, yeah. oh I've seen that show. Yeah. Uh, our bike guy told oh, us that really? yeah, a lot of Americans are asking to like, see Gabrielle's uh, restaurant. 
<laughs> it does look good. The Cute. <laughs> it does. <laughs> So. Oh, awesome. Well, what an experience. So if any of these sites, or if you want to do a whole uh, trip to France or just to Paris a week, like uh, Tamara was recommending, uh, she can certainly help piece that together, curate that for you, depending <coughs> on what interests you have, and even Disney, if you want a little bit of Disney, mm -hmm. so contact okay. her. And, of course, check out her uh, Facebook group, Traveling with Tamara, for uh, a lot of pictures. Yep, I'll put a lot of stuff A lot of stuff, there. videos, all that good stuff. Um, the drone video is pretty cool from uh, Disney World. Yeah. Keep saying if you get on there. Yeah. It's really cool. So, well, I think we'll pivot to um, any uh, anything interesting happening in the Good Life Travel Company. By now, when this airs, we'll have oh, done our... this morning? We have, well, by the time this airs, we'll have had our Viking Cruise Nights. <laughs> yes. And um, we'll have booked lots of honeymoons, because you're always doing honeymoons. Always honeymoons. Maybe some trips to London, you know, yeah. for Tamara. But I know a yep. couple of ones you're working on. So, any other updates or anything interesting or anything new in your niche that you want to share? I... I can't think of anything new. <laughs> Why do we keep you around? What the heck? You know? Well, we, we read this morning that the TSA is ch uh, changing uh, pre-check. They're but, allowing minors yeah. with their parents to go Yeah, through. which is kind if of a new travel change. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, you, if you have pre uh, TSA pre-check, your minors mm -hmm. can go through with you now, which okay. is a good move. Mm -hmm. Anything, Tamara, in your niche no, or I your I keep finding um, really good airfare bargains in the fall. Like, if you want to go to Europe in the fall, you should give me a call. Is that like, a busy time? I think there? it's the best time to visit oh. Europe. I really do. It's uh, The temperatures are cooler. The crowds are a little less. Uh, it, I really like the fall in Europe, so okay. highly recommend it. I mean, I'm talking like $600, $700 round trip to like uh, Paris. Or Amsterdam, that mm -hmm. includes your, your luggage. That's a good that's price. A, and that's, I was finding direct out of Detroit. That's bi that's a big Wow, yeah. Direct to Paris out of Detroit? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there's some direct to um, Cleveland to uh, uh, Dublin, Dublin. Mm -hmm. that are good pr prices. So, yeah. We're even using that as a launching pad, we've talked about before. Yeah. Once you get to a place, it's easy to get an inter Europe flight on EasyJet or Ryanair. You know, they are very inexpensive, so... Okay. Wonderful. You know, the only thing I'll share for news, and this doesn't, it'll indirectly implicate everyone, or not affect everyone, all the cruise lines are changing up all their executives. I don't know if you guys have seen this recently. Yeah. We talked briefly, like uh, maybe a month or two ago, they started announcing a lot of them retiring, the top ones, and now it's trickling down. So it's kind of working its way down, and it's like all new people in charge of these cruise lines. So yeah. I, I have a hunch there'll be some changes coming, because, you know, with new people, new right. leaderships, mm -hmm. new CEOs, yes. down to senior VPs, down yeah. to sales people. It, it, I think there's going to be some changes in the industry. You know, they'll all launch on new ships, but there's slowly an evolution. Um, a lot more freestyle kind of cruising, to borrow Norwegian's you know phrase. But a lot of the cruise lines are a lot more uh, loose on the rules and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think there's yeah. gonna be more of that. I think there'll just be more too. changes because cruisers are expecting different mm -hmm. things now, having different expectations. So yeah. just stay tuned because I think there'll be some some changes, evolution, and cruising as we go along. So that's the only thing I wanted to share. Is interesting. Okay, I think. It, executives got them through covid that was yeah. it a lot of them got through and yeah. then yeah. you know they had big paychecks and then you know they're yeah. restarting and lights cruise lines took out big debt yeah. during covid I, to I keep things too. going and yeah. um you know they're all in the middle of building ships that they now need to pay yeah. for and yeah. launch so yeah. yeah big changes but of course it's still the best way to travel so mm -hmm. i don't know tam's way sounded pretty good well it you can go really there and good. catch a river boat <laughs> cruise on the the beautiful sign Send, send, sign, whatever. And I'm the one that gets made fun of all the time. <laughs> well, all right. After <laughs> that, even go there. Uh, I think we're going to end this show. <laughs> we certainly want to thank everyone for watching another episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. Yes. As always, any of these sound interesting, any of these trips, experiences, contact us. And as always, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good social media stuff. And um, let us know how we can get you on your next vacation or trip so you can experience the good life. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Take All care. Bye-bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Let's see what does that mean. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>